Hey, I've been meaning to get down some of my ideas in this time um, during this global pandemic. There have been a, a lot of thoughts that have gone through my head, and um, it's, it's April 2nd, 2020 now. We just emerged from a month of, hard to say, I'm, <clears throat> I'm tempted to call it a revolution. Um, and there's there's a trend in this social distancing that tends towards de-urbanization. Um, so whatever whatever language it's called by, I I would like to look at and as correctly as possible um, detect isomorphism, which is. Um, similar structures, similar shapes in seemingly unrelated systems. So right now, especially if we're talking about getting our intelligence and getting our um, getting our orders in many senses from the World Health Organization, this is a, um, it's a, it's a global concern. So, um, looking at the UN's plans for, um, especially looking at, at this, this long list from 2012's The Future We Want, uh, and I had it somewhere here. I've got so many tabs open. All right, sustainable development, um, dot UN dot org slash future we want future we want dot html and uh, I've read through 48 points so far but there are um, hundreds of points 283 points I'm going to go back to where I was before so I can um, keep reading so like yes there is a um, social distancing happening at this time, which, which is a, uh, it's a medical language and, uh, but, but it's just, it, it's, to me, it seems so, um, isomorphic to de-urbanization, which is a concern, you know, from, from a high global level UN World Health Organization, where everything, um, drips down from, from there. Um, the sort of best practices that we're, we're getting and you can like tune in at this local level or this level um, and all the, the best practices and buzzwords seem to be the same and they're unchanged coming down these hierarchies um, so the agenda you know the, the agenda is coming down to us and it's been prepared and, and planned at least the, the language of it um, and the um, in routes that had to be made in order to pass this language down. Yes, we're in a time of crisis where um, pretty much everyone has uncertainty. However, there are these things in, in place and it's in maybe like the shock of the manifestation of all these things being previously prepared in different sectors, they're all like firing at once. So there was, you know, things in the, either in the backlog, um, a lot of it is just that, like there's um, both for organizations and for individuals, this crisis has um, maybe not brought about all the backlog items. And I can meet, I, I can uh, refer to actual backlog items in a project management software that a team or an org can run. Um, and also, also I mean the things that people just meant to do um, certain certain tasks for people who aren't um, particularly organizationally minded. This isn't just an organizational phenomenon. This crisis brings about um, a jostling of the backlog of of many and <clears throat> and every individual on earth um, or many of them seem seem to have uh, pushed something that they held back in the past and by by hold back I don't even necessarily mean 
um, that they're withholding information or, or action in a kind of private or secretive manner. It's just there's these things like, oh, I, you know, I really meant to do that before. And now it's like, well, if I'm ever going to do that, it's now. And, and so there's an urgency that happened. And that you know, some of that stuff was already happening maybe not a month ago um, on my level or, or to what I saw, but certainly around March 11th or 12th was when, in, in my experience, there was a real escalation of urgency within myself and, and you know, I guess like if you, if you move into that kind of space, personally, you'll see it in the world. So I was also tuning into that um, and other people as well. So a lot of stuff got done in a time where many were sent home to work from home on uh, like limited amounts of work um, or seemingly reduced workloads. Um, in, in some sense, organizations um, sent their employees home to rest, and, and many of us took that as a chance to go, yeah, I'm going to rest, and I'm going to justify the hell out of it because I've needed a mental break for a long time, <laughs> and I'm going to take it now, it's especially if there is the um, ethical presupposition that that's a good thing to do right now. So I, I've seen people do that, and people who definitely needed a physical break or a a mental health break there's like you know totally on board for that and they went and rested and good for them um, that reset was needed but at the same time on the individual level and and that's maybe one of those things that um, doesn't seem like a, a um, in, in a productivity sense or in a pragmatic sense um, we don't typically think of sit back and relax as a, as a backlog item, but for some people, um, you know, some personality types, they will put off relaxation and, and rest and really um, taking care of themselves forever, and, and they finally got to that point. So there was, there was kind of a collapsation of duality in, in personalities that happened during this crisis that I've seen um, in the past month, and there are certainly things that I was acting on that I don't think I would have acted on unless I absolutely had to, unless I absolutely thought, like, you know, there are eschatological um, consequences here. And meaning, like, I saw, like, the, the world ends, or the world could be ending, or my world is totally ending. My, my understanding of, like, great catastrophe um, at the end, I was visualizing things and, and sort of uh, in these moments where I came to the realization of just how much punctuated transition is happening right now um, how this really is an event of great magnitude all over the place it is both a personal crisis and a interpersonal crisis happening and there was so much collapsation that I saw and and there's a part of me that really doesn't believe that I'm on the other side of it, although this thing is not over, um, there's a part of me that is like, wow, there is a sort of new normal emerging, maybe. Things are going to still change, um, and there's anxiety in that. But definitely over the past month, there was like, there was a strengthening given to me because I really did see the end of the world in my mind. Um, and this is... My, my sober mind. There wasn't anything pushing me chemically, to my understanding. Um, you know, I wasn't even drinking coffee. There's, there's really, like, not anything in my system that would push me towards um, what kind of extreme thought or another. It's just the, the circumstances of the world and starting to visualize the grand consequences happening in the present and soon to happen in the future. Um, shocked my system and there were experiences I was happening, having of uh, panic attacks and anxiety attacks and, and I experienced my body healing itself by enduring these things and not turning to 
um, any kind of psychiatric medication or anything. This is just like a very natural thing and also a very spiritual thing because there's a lot of prayer that happened during this time. Um, and that was amazing to see. At the same time, my body and my immune system was kicking anxiety's ass, kicking fear's ass. That's something I experienced. And it really, um, I think that has given me a new appreciation and a new trust in the human nervous system itself and some of the problems that we turn to um, drugs, not saying that drugs are altogether bad, but we, we turn to these psychiatric alternatives instead of going through the dark night of the soul and, and, and there's definitely something um, between that sort of an experience and the biology. So like um, when you think of the, a dark night of the soul, it's like a spiritual um, dilemma where you probably have to repent either in your actions or in the more um, literal etymological um, sense of repent, which comes from the word metanoia, which means a higher mind. You have to understand things at a higher level. That will, in effect, change your feelings and your behaviors and your, your behaviors related to relationships. Um, but, you know, that dark night of the soul is, is something that's, that's, you know, we already have a biology created or evolved or both to deal with the sorts of things and it can take care of itself and there's like a natural healing um, if you walk through the crisis without um, letting something else take the reins it's like life itself will will deal with that what I'm basically what I'm trying to say is like there's something very intelligent about how human biology can handle crisis and, and maybe it's just certain kinds of nervous system or certain kinds of personality type that will that will personality or psychological type that will take it in a certain way um, but I just I felt totally cleaned out in ways that um, I don't know if if anything else has ever done that for me this major crisis that really um, tests your beliefs and, and also your actions in the moment because if you're um, you know there's right, right now there's the opportunity to live at the top of the future as and, and this is a quote from somebody's kid on LinkedIn like a, like a young kid said this like why are you um, upset or worried we are at the top of the future right now and I want to give credit to whoever that kid was um, I gotta go find out and, and go through my, my history. Now I'm drinking coffee again. For a while I wasn't. Um, but, you know, there was something that happened in the past month that um, with certain uh, beliefs and, and feelings and behaviors, the realization of, oh my God, I'm at the bottom of the past. Like, there is something that is going away there is some kind of old world that is going away and if you know you find yourself in a status quo that is busted and no longer working you got to do whatever you can to jump up to that next status quo coming in and that was like where is the status quo for a while there in in my perception there was there was no status quo at all now there's some kind of status quo being built there's already new structures being in place because for you know the whole time that the health crisis has been going on there's also been um, territorial movements and and business movements and, and movements in communication that happen out of necessity and there are um, different kinds of psychological types within humanity that are going to deal with crises in, 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 in different ways and, and um, for example some parts of the population are going to go rest 
<laughs> it's time for them to rest when it wasn't before. And at the same time, there's a new shift that is open for those who do well in crisis and, and um, also an awakening for for those who might have been sort of sleeping before when, when they might have had a rest of their own. Now there's a new crisis. So yes, there's been the um, phenomenon of, of sending people home, but at the same time there's been people other people, you know, like firefighters, so to speak, um, and fighters of different kinds of fires who are rushing in under, you know, very, um, I would say, time conscious people. Like now is the time. I can feel it in my intuition. I can feel it in my gut that it's time to move and restructure things because, and uh, and you know, come from a from a survival level if we don't move at this time to build a new world the people who just took off work are not going to have something to come back to and if they don't have something to come back to we don't have a world at all <laughs> so you know those in the medical profession and, and those in administration and entrepreneurship and all sorts of crisis management have it to step in and a lot of these things are happening um, I would say out of, out of necessity behind the scenes because the scene is like take care of your health and, and there's this um, public narrative that has to be for the for the public health um, pushed and, and put into the forefront where it's like don't make the population that we need to be feeling safe and secure at this time um, we will allow them media and um, escapism at this time because they're personal feelings of safety and security are really important because we don't want toxic emotions being pushed in, into the entire human emotional um, environment. Um, but at the same time, there are things behind the scenes that need to be fixed, and, and some of them are speculative, and, and, and some of them are decisive movements um, that if you're paying attention to can sometimes be um, you know there's an anxiety of its own in there because there's not going to be a crisis where political movements territorial movements aren't being made um, but there are forces of good in that as well and I pray that the forces of good organize and balance out at least balance out everything that um, evil or dark forces could be doing during this time to spread new forms of chaos um, I'm confident that um, there is a balancing out and there is so much good work that can be done and, and is being done during this time and new forms of commu communication are arising there are some structures that make me nervous um, but they are likely just um, or a lot of them are likely further manifestations tech manifestations um, of structures that were already in place. For example, I see large organizations moving into a very um, hierarchical structure and using their their video conferencing to being able to ultimately spy on a bunch of little teams. But those organizations that are doing that are were already in the um, habit of, of doing that and 
I guess <laughs> for me, I, I have a lot of sympathy or, or empathy for people who can get stuck in organizations and and I hope the people who are in lower levels of very multi-tiered hierarchies within within corporations I'm, I'm mainly talking about companies here I can't talk about um, governmental structures I'm talking about corporations um, you know I don't want people to get stuck in low places in, in a corp and not be able to get out because um, You know, it's like maybe that's their place in society, but I, I just, I, I have concern for those who are exploited. When we, we think about exploitation, uh, we don't commonly think about the salariat. Uh, we don't commonly think about um, those who are at a seemingly higher socioeconomic level where they're giving salaries. That's what I mean by salariat. You know, that's, that's like a a charge term that, that some people might not appreciate and there's there's certain um, um, they might connect to other maps that um, the people I usually am speaking to they might not like that sort of a, a term but I think it's a useful term um, at least to start with salaria we don't we don't um, usually the salaria are seen as privileged they're right below the elite even though they might be um, um, way less monetarily endowed they're still very high in the hierarchy just be below the elite um, but at this time um, you know as as the computer scientist Jaron Lanier from Bay, Bay Area says um, data is the new oil and you can see or it seems to me that large organizations can sort of strip mine their employees right now and they're coming into work um, voluntarily and, and being um, presented with like here's just something to get your mind off of what's going on in the world but then they're going straight into um, I don't know I don't want to be so black hatted about it I don't want to I don't want to be so so negative about it I just I pray for the people who are potentially being exploited and maybe I'm one of them by this um, situation point is what I'm saying is your data and your information and what you can see in the world and report on is very valuable and don't forget that don't um, value it so highly that you never share it but understand that the good data that you have um, you know your nervous system is a very 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 highly advanced technology already not even concerning all of the technology outside of ourselves your nervous system already is a highly 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 advanced technology designed by the creator of the universe don't forget it <clears throat> so yeah I mean in the in these um, ideation groups where people might not be getting paid right now and also if they have something like a 401k um, or investments um, the market is <laughs> looking really shitty right now excuse my French and um, you know in a time where people might still be looking to advance their career by by taking taking a spot in their organizations um, I call it brain draining that's a that's a pejorative for me it's a brain drain I don't want to I don't want to be stuck in in a place where um, my ideas are being strip mined from me. That's another pejorative term. Um, I don't. I don't want my ideas strip mined from me and never get back to me. I, I at least want people to be credited. If there's going to be these multi-level um, surveillance systems going on in large corporations, I just. I really want people to get credit for what they're doing. And and I think part of this comes from um, seeing 
how my dad's company did and still does, even though he's retired now, give him a lot of credit. Um, and in, they involve him on, in, in uh, patent works and, and, and sometimes he is given, um, or a lot of times he's given credit on paper for the ideas that he was a part of creating. And also he is monetarily compensated. And, and, you know, this is a sort of residual income that I think in the best organizations, every individual that contributes these sorts of ideas, um, they'll be hooked up to something like that. If their ideas live on, so should they, and so should their share in the residual income. I think building a great organization will have that from the beginning, and I see organizations that might be good organizations and I don't see them doing this and I think it's idea theft um, but at the same time there are there, there's always going to be exploitation and exploitation can happen um, purposely when when people are looking down at others within a human hierarchy and um, grabbing their ideas out of them and using them for themselves um, without giving credit. That can happen um, maliciously, and I think it does happen maliciously in, in some organizations or many organizations, but at the same time it can happen um, on accident when you, when you don't know um, the, the value of the resources within your own organization. So, for example, um, in these ideation groups, one thing that, that happens, and you'll hear people talk about it um, in all sorts of ideation groups and, and think tanks, um, like ideas are cheap. Ideas aren't cheap, though, because it's, it's data, and ideas by themselves um, can appear cheap because they're so far from manifestation, especially if um, some of the like ideational masters of our population that can exist anywhere in the hierarchy, high, low, whatever, um, their ideas can be cheap because they're, you know, like really like Shrek modeled or, or far out ideas. They don't have a obvious at first, um, way to actually bring these things into what ultimately becomes best practices. Um, however, within thought lattices ideas shouldn't be thought of as as cheap and and not everyone is an ideational um powerhouse i might have a lot of ideas and and know how to structure a lot of different information however i can't ideate how some people can ideate and, and some people i think like if if people are stuck in these smaller supervised groups they can bring out an idea. Um, I just, I want to know if those people are credited for it. I want to know that those people are credited for it because it can go straight to the top. And when you have an organization of a lot of people with a lot of different thought forms going on, these things can manifest pretty quickly. Um, if the if the collective group mind is, is structured well enough to do such a thing, um, which I think is why this data mining happens the way it does in the first place and why it it pays for large organizations to be so large because if you have enough thinkers eventually some kind of good ideas are going to come through um, yeah so it's like I, I guess I, I am I suspect that there's inequity in in the way that that companies data mine their own employees and the reason I suspect that there's inequity is because there's emotional distress and there's anxiety in these groups and fear and it might just be the time and the changes um, 
but it also might be that people somehow or somewhere know that they're giving a lot more than they're getting back and in that sense like no idea is a bad idea because there's a lot of choice creation and if there's given 10 options I think even Clay Christensen said how to get good ideas is you get a lot of ideas and that would make sense with the um, either what's called extroverted intuition and introverted intuition or creating choices and making choices um, the more choices you have the less chance of there being a Xanatos gambit of a limited amount of choices that suggests a preconceived choice being made for you. You want more options to escape the trap of the Xanatos Gambit. Does that make any sense? Um, yeah, so these are some of the things that I have been considering. I'm, I'm searching my mind right now for some kind of conclusion to this and it might be a prayer and my uh, I guess it's a, a prayer is a is a clearing of your own intentions and an attempt at an alignment with something higher than yourself so my prayer is that my vision be cleared and, and clarified not to see animosity when there really is none and also that I am able to walk into a world that either already exists or I help create where people are really given credit for their ideas and taken care of understanding that data is the new oil let us not strip mine our people's minds but take care of them because at any level even below our organizations where people are literally living on the street sometimes the best ideas come from there sometimes the best ideas come from children who have no experience <laughs> with life and sometimes it just means no indoctrination into things that are almost true but not actually true so that is my that is my prayer that we take care of our own minds and the minds of everyone because all of these ideas are pushing us forward as a species and as consciousness itself